Okay, welcome to the 25th of September Mycroft Dev Sale. I'm going to my dragon hat. So, um, we're roughly halfway through our sprint. There may be some small children in the background. Um, so let's, uh, let's go through and give uh, any uh, status updates, especially focusing on any problem areas. Uh, Chris Bear, you are in the center on my screen, so. To the center square. <laughs> um, yeah, everything is just, nothing is blocking me right now. I spent today um, doing some here and there type tasks. Um, I got Kevin on to um, on a Jira, and he's poking around there. Um, I'm getting the, uh, the change to the Docker file for um, white count skills. I'm getting that done. I'll probably do the Discord. Well, I probably shouldn't do the Discourse thing today. It's probably better either on Friday. So I'll do that next week. <laughs> um, but yeah, little things. Um, I did uh, I did also change the conversion process uh, it, to uh, to not SSH out as much. It now runs a thousand records in a second instead of in seven or ten minutes. So uh, that's a, that's an improvement. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, next week we'll be uh, starting on, I've done some work on, good, on getting up to Angular 10. I've not gotten all the way there yet. There's a several step process I need to do, and I'm working on that. And um, we'll continue working on the tagger next week. Okay. Um, Ken. Oh, I'm already unmuted. Uh, yeah, so I uh, did a pull request. Chris, uh, did you have just that one, or were there multiple pull requests for me? Well, you reviewed one the other day, and I merged it, and then you reviewed the one I set up this morning. Yeah, and so that's good. So I'm yep, good. I'll merge. I'll merge it today. Uh, yeah. So that that's the last one I have for now. I think the the conversion code is all in just a, a Python notebook right now because it's throwaway code. I don't want to commit it. There. Okay. All right, so I did some pull requests. I um, also uh, got the uh, my Pi 4 just now flashed with uh, the PyCroft image, the Kivi image. So I'm going to go and, and run some tests on that. And uh, <coughs> I also got a chance to look at the VF control USB commands and sent an email to you, uh, Michael, regarding. Uh, GPIOs and the I2C bus and the X5 bus are all available through those commands. So that, that makes it a lot easier. Really the only issue outstanding would be interrupts over the USB port and that's not absolutely necessary to get everything working. So I think we're good if we choose to go that route in the future. Um, yeah, and uh, that's where I'm at. Okay. Great. Uh, guess. Uh, yeah, I went on a bit of a, a PR closing rampage um, uh, and got our core, at least, down quite significantly. Um, we're, we're now at 20 open PRs with only a small number from prior to 2020. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, the the um, the roadmap stuff that I that I posted in in chat, um, uh, which um, was halfway through responding to to Michael's comments, um, so I'll finish that up after this meeting. Um, uh, oh, I had a I, I had a look at the um, exposing the the logs from. Our void comp test runs, um, and Chris interested in whether you think we should go that deeper route. I don't know if you got the message on the ticket. Yeah, um, I like the idea of being able to show the logs um, for each test, you know, related to that test. I think that's a really good idea. So if we can figure that out, I think that'd be awesome. Otherwise, you got to dig through thousands of lines. But um, yeah, yeah. We'll see. It's it, it's worth a look, I think. So essentially, the Allure reporting framework that we use 
there's a they have an attachments um, feature, uh, and so you can attach either just strings of text or attach actual documents like specifically to each test. Um, and so we could theoretically attach the at least a portion of the of Microsoft logs to the test where it failed, and so you can kind of see or just attach the entire log. Um, but yeah, Trick's going to be parsing the log and figuring out what <laughs> what part to put with what test. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so I'll see if I can figure that out. Um, the backup plan is just to attach the entire logs to, well, package the entire logs up with the Allure output um, so that when they get pushed across to the reporting, to the reports, um, host, then that goes along with it, and then we'll just provide a, a link in the PR comment or in the email or something. Um, or I guess we could upload it to, to something like 0x0.xt that we use for some other things, which is just like a anyway, paste bin type thing. Um, but we shouldn't need to do that. Uh, yeah, so roadmaps, um, PR stuff, um, and the logs. That was my main stuff in terms of the um, in terms of the. Oh, I also did a. Um, we did the the Mark II update. Oh, and a, another blog post about our partnership, coming partnership with Talk Socket. That's what they call talk socket. Um, so that should go out today, theoretically. Um, anyway, and reviewed a bunch of PRs and found some bugs and fixed those. So that's me. OK. So is there anything in particular that you're waiting for from anyone else at this point? Have you gotten no, if, feedback um, on your um, roadmap and? Well, in terms of the roadmap, I guess um, if anyone has opinions, then then jump forward. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep moving forward with it. Um, I think so. Specifically about your stuff, Michael, I feel like the the have the ability to add separate boards for you know sub projects. I think is really good, um, and I think we should use that. You know, where there's a bigger piece of functionality that's going to obviously have multiple parts to it. Um, I feel like the community versus internal team, like splitting out two roadmaps for an internal roadmap and, an, and a community roadmap kind of creates more distinction than is necessary at the moment. Um, there is a label that's applied to any PR or, or issue that's like help wanted. And so that kind of indicates that, you know, Either someone's working on it and would like additional help, or no one's working on this at the moment, so it's it's available for people to pick up. Um, and so, I've, you know, in terms of if an issue is being worked on by me, or if an issue is being worked on by Jarvis, or by you know, Okay, or or you know, another community member, I don't I don't know that we get a lot of benefit out of splitting that onto a separate board. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't necessarily be a separate board. Maybe it's just a different column, or maybe you know, maybe it's a label, like you said. Uh, I just wanted to, it to be clear to the community where our focus is, and, you know, versus uh, what our community right. initiated, you know, projects. Well, and that's kind of intended with the uh, so one of the one of the columns is um, uh, nice to have. Um, and that's in, intended to be anything, anything where it really is a. It's not going to be a focus for the internal team at all. So, you know, uh, in you know, we're not going to work on it. Um, but also, it's probably going to take. It's probably going to take a slight backseat, even in terms of PR reviews and things, because it's not. Um, You know, there's just other other priorities where we're 
if we if we need to review PRs, then we're going to get to those first. Um, and I know that it's it's a really hard thing too because obviously people are putting a lot of work into into different things. Like, you know, there's a guy that's um, that's been porting things over to Windows, um, which which is huge, uh, and he's been making a lot of really good progress. Um, and so I really do want to get to you know everyone's contributions, um, but there's just there's just a limit to how much we can do in a day, and so. Um, we need to, to stay focused on the things that are going to get the Mark II out the door um, and then get to Windows support when we can get there. Would that be a separate repository? Uh, well, it, it spans a whole, it spans, you know, Precise and a bunch of repositories. It's just he's sort of created a central issue for porting Minecraft to Windows within the Minecraft core repo. So it's, it's just sitting there at the moment. But yeah. OK. Um, all right, well, thanks for that. Um, I'll, well, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take a look and give any, any further feedback as you, know, as you make progress on that. But I like what I've seen so far. So I think that'll be really yeah, cool. Well, and I think it's going to keep evolving over time. Like, you know, they're yeah. all living things. All right, uh, Derek, do you have any updates for us? Yeah, um, sorry, no video. I've got some internet issues today for some reason. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I got a couple of things that I've got in review. I just sent an invite today for Chris. You may not have seen it yet, but let's try to meet up maybe Monday to review um, the GUI based on the changes we talked about um, for the first the first round of the, the tagger, sorry, the GUI tagger. Um, <clears throat> and I've had a little progress in the sourcing side of things. Um, I got uh, the DSI display um, at quoted at $20, which is what we're using right now. Um, so one of the things we've been discussing was you know, we can save uh, some money if we switch to the DPI, which uses the 40 pin GPIO, um, but uses almost all of it off the Pi to drive the display. Um, you can get a display around $11, you know, $11.50 or so um, if you go that route. But there is, it's not just plug and play like the DSI is, which is um, quite nice about the DSI. You just plug it in and go. There's no setup at all. Um, but with the DPI, not only do we need some converter boards and such, there is going to be some amount of um, software stuff and hardware stuff that needs to be done to get that to work. It all seems to be fairly well documented out there, but it's still not, uh, not just plug and play. Um, so anyway, that means uh, I think that kind of helped us decide with um, sticking with the current design for a little bit longer um, and using the DSI and, and not moving on the DPI right away and saving that as a cost savings change in the future. Um, I'm also making some good progress on the speakers. Um, I should be getting like 20 samples of those in a couple of weeks. Uh, if you guys recall, the speakers are kind of expensive like uh, 11 bucks a piece. Um, I had kind of wait, I kind of halted a day or two on printing the um, first FDM design because of this discussions we were having of possibly moving to the DPI like um, quickly uh, for the display, which would actually change the physical aspects of it. Uh, not a, a huge amount, but enough that multiple parts would change. Um, but now it seems like we're going to stick with that. I'll, I'll get back to printing more um, devices or more parts uh, to finish that first prototype. Looks like um, Chris has a question. Oh, yeah. um, just when we say like moving in the future, changing in the future, just to 100% clarify, we're talking about after 
all the Kickstarter backers, all the, all the Kickstarter Mark IIs have gone out, right? Correct. Well, this is like yeah. a future revision. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's that's kind of the Michael question. But yeah, there's like he talked about that in our um, Mattermost chat. There's kind of a point where the cost savings versus the NRE are going to make sense. Um, but it looks like he kind of speaking for you, Michael. <laughs> like you kind of crunched the numbers and thought that was that was okay to put off for a while. Yeah, I just wanted to also make it clear for people that might be listening along from home. You know, we're not going to change the display in two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing for us, and also we're, we're kind of discussing there too, is that means we're going to have two enclosure versions potentially in the future. One that has a, you know, set up for DPI and one set up for DSI and, um, you know, maybe some other little things between the enclosures that are a little different. But, um, you know, we'll cross that, that bridge, I guess, when we get there. So, um, yeah. That's uh, there's a lot of other things we can talk about too. Maybe Michael will probably fill us in on that uh, on the hardware side. Um, but for me, it means I'm I get to go back to, you know, the the version I was working on without heavy modification. So, so that's good for me. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's a that's about it for me. I don't think I'm really blocked by anyone. Did I see that we got Kevin in into that I thought I saw a comment. Yeah, he's in Jira now and poking around. He's already commented on a few things. I pointed him to the um, Mark II project and to the Mycroft board so he knows what's going on. Um, so hopefully, um, I told him a lot of the stuff he was doing is probably assigned to you, Derek, right now. So to feel free to you know, find stuff, the stuff that he's doing instead of you, that kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, maybe I should meet with him and talk about some of this stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, well, yeah, that's it for me. Let's see if you guys have any questions on hardware front. Um, my only questions on that front are, um, you know, the status of getting the bomb put together uh, and getting price estimates or quotes for the various uh, pieces. You know, where are we along uh, on that front? Um, I'm doing pretty good on, on like the purchase parts, but you know, the plastics are still there, you know, um, it's just kind of a ballpark estimate. And I'm waiting for Kevin to put in his latest estimate. I think that was also kind of just a bit on hold until we decided how we were going to do the third spin. Um, but yeah, so maybe, well, let's see, Kevin's going to be out like half of next week, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, I'll try to get a hold of him today and see if he can, before he leaves, give me his latest and greatest bomb for the PCBs. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so for my part, um, on the hardware side, as has been alluded to, uh, we're going to do another spin on the board. Uh, this will correct uh, a bug and make a really minor change to the audio data path, which will greatly simplify our software. So, um, And uh, hopefully this will be the one we go into our first production run with. This will be uh, yeah. Uh, this will be good up to you know tens of thousands of units probably. Um, you know, we start going higher than that, we'll probably want to do a revision for cost reasons, and uh, uh, and you know perhaps for other reasons as well, functionality. But um, but yeah, the design that we've got right now uh, is is pretty solid. In fact, uh, the other thing that I've asked is um, we've got I think something like six working boards right now um, that have a couple of bugs on them, and the uh, so I've asked uh, Kevin to take a look at you know reworking those boards so that we can get them up and running you know maybe by next week uh, at, at full functionality uh, you know with the amplifier fix which is really just swapping a couple of capacitors and um, you know running a couple of wires from the XMOS over to the uh, sound card to enable that data path so that we're you know 
without having to send dual audio streams over the USB. So, um, you know, it's really just, it's literally two wires. So, um, if he can implement those and they're, and they're stable enough to, to work with, then that'll be great because then we'll have boards that are exactly the equivalent of what we will be making um, in volume. So, uh, that would be great. Would I be able to get enough, one of those to replace the board I have, or should I send my board in to be fixed like that? Yeah, that's the question. Yeah, four to go to rollover, correct? Right. We've, well, those are they got the um, the respeaker based ones instead of the uh, SJ two hundred one versions, and um, uh, we I don't think we have enough to replace all four of their boards, but. Um, but yeah, as soon as as soon as we have them, we'll you know I'd be I'd love to replace them with with the new version. So, um, but yeah, to answer your question, Chris, the idea is that uh, everybody except maybe Ken would send you know all of their boards back to Kevin uh, for him to rework late next week. He's going to be out through Wednesday, so um, it won't necessarily be the fastest turnaround, but it'll certainly be faster than you know the the three weeks that I'm expecting for the next spin of the boards. Uh, so with this version, uh, I'm confident enough that it's actually going to be uh, a working version. We might do a higher volume run. And uh, the goal is to have them fully uh, assembled by the uh, by the assembly house. So you know there's no there should be no rework required by Kevin once they come back to us. They should just you know come back from the factory ready to plug in. So, um, so you know, we might order more than ten this time. Um, uh, Josh has been experimenting with some uh, some pretty exciting uh, uh, TensorFlow accelerator units, um, and one of the neat things about the current design is that you can just plug one of those into the USB slot, and uh, it'll be available to use. So he's been playing around with that. He's got TensorFlow Lite working on it, and it uh, he says it speeds things up by thirty x. So that's pretty cool. Um, that won't be incorporated as a baseline part of this design, but certainly it's a it's a pretty low cost option for uh, for people to add in uh, if they want to uh, play around with some extended functionality. So will we have we we give those of us who have the boards we have now an address to send them to. Um, yeah, I, I haven't gotten a confirmation yet from Kevin. Uh, to agree to this plan. Uh, so um, as soon as I hear from him and, and get confirmation that this is something that is reasonable to do, then uh, I'll let you know. Mm, let's see, what else you guys want to hear about? I've mostly uh, been spending my time on fundraising, so we're not going to talk about that here. And um, yeah, uh, well, we mentioned the audio popping issue, uh, perhaps uh, over the last week or two. Uh, that has been resolved, and that was just a, that was a blue wire issue because uh, there was some additional capacitance on. Or, yeah, we were getting ringing on the line because it wasn't you know uh, properly impedance matched with the uh, source. So anyway, um, it's basically a non-issue. Once we wrap that that line on the circuit board, it'll it'll just go away. Um, yeah, so on the hardware front, things are looking pretty good. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's all I've got for today. So how are we looking overall on this milestone? I know that when we set out at, earlier this week, uh, not this milestone, this spring, uh, when we set out this early this week, uh, it looked ambitious, but it was all stuff that seemed necessary for the upcoming milestone. Um, how are uh, how are how are we feeling? You know, with regard to progress, uh, how about that now? I'm looking fine. Okay. Very few of my tasks are actually related to milestone zero, so I mean, I'm, I'm doing okay as far as getting them done, but <laughs> um, really wait to look to that specifically. Right. Okay. Okay, well, we'll just keep an eye on it on Monday. Let's check in again. Um, unless there's any other questions, uh, comments, or concerns. No? All right. 
Uh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on a second. Okay. I, I had an idea anyway. I just wanted to throw out. Um, I can mention this to Gez. Um, I think it would be nice to come up with something that we can use to test the audio on Bring Up. Something very simple. Because um, what we're seeing a lot is is a failure of you know microservice or you know as we're bringing as we're working on the hardware you know this probably could be a failure on the hardware side as well so something very simple like we play a tone during the boot up process and we put the mics on and make sure that that tone is heard um and you know we do a little check that goes to say hey okay hardware is good mics are working sound output is working we you know mm -hmm. we're past that Power on self test. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I don't know the you know level of effort on that, but uh, you know that could save us a lot of headaches going back and forth on like is this software, is this hardware, is this software, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, especially for me. Anyway. <laughs> um, so amazingly, my uh, my old unit that I have over there, not the new one, I altered the startup. Bash RC to do exactly that because of the issues we were seeing with the re-speaker board. So when it first powers up, it tries to play a wave file and an MP3 file, and I can always tell upon boot by listening to it whether it's working or whether it's busted. Now, the problem is that when it's not working, it thinks it is. The only difference is I don't hear anything. So I don't know how to encapsulate that in a test that would give you a yay or nay. I just know that it's an audible validation for me that it boots and okay, I don't have to reboot it. <laughs> but I don't know, I mean, because it's tricky what you're asking because the audio, the audio subsystem when it's not working, at least with the re-speaker, it thinks it is. Well, I think well, that the idea is, like you said, is you turn on the mics as well and you listen for it. So yeah. it can listen to itself. And, exactly. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> not if Kevin is successful. <laughs> well, the, well, you can yeah, actually yeah. pass the un, the unfiltered audio back in. It actually records both. So yeah. <laughs> but anyway, right. the point is, I don't know how to do it from a programmatic perspective. Um, it's, it's one of the one of the channels of... coming back from the XMOS is the is the unprocessed input. Um, I feel like there's two. I feel like there's so there's two things here. Like there's like this this would be an excellent system for the, the final image that goes on devices so that you know it's it's doing it when people boot their device and then we can, you know, run some troubleshooting process or, or you know, try and recover from whatever's gone wrong and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. But I feel I wonder if for our own, you know, hardware development purposes, whether we actually want well, whether we can just create a, a completely separate image that has nothing to do with Microsoft so that when we have new hardware, we boot, you know, a test image that goes through and, and tests all of the, all of the subsystems, all of the hardware subsystems in some way. I haven't actually looked yet, but I imagine that other people who are building with the Pi as a base are, are doing similar things, but Yeah, I mean, this is this is uh, certainly something that we need to get to before commercial release. Uh, but it does sound like it's going to have some utility for debugging as well. So I've created a, a generic issue, uh, and I've assigned it to Ken because you know he he looks he, he looked like he wanted it. So <laughs> because he made the mistake of opening his mouth again. <laughs> so you figure he'd learn by now. <laughs> No, it's fine. I'll look into it. I, I do agree. It's it's uh, it's a value, short term and long term. Um, you know, it's tricky, but I'll figure it out. Yeah. So I'll, I mean, possibly also, I'm thinking like for project rollover or any other potential pilot or partner program we do in the future, it makes you know debugging hardware a little bit easier too because we can say, okay, try running this thing real quick or you know, doing some, you know, especially if it was like something we can run via voice or whatever, like do a diagnostics test or something. Um, run, a, run a level one diagnostic. <laughs> right. Um, but anyway, 
Okay, just something I was thinking about. Yeah, okay, thanks. That's a, that's a good thing to know. Any other great ideas out there? Nope, that's it. <laughs> Ken doesn't want any more great ideas. All right. <laughs> uh, I do have a question. Um, I'd like to discuss the audio file name issue you have out there mm, for the spring right. next mm -hmm. week. Is there a good day for you? Is there oh, going to be a scheduling meeting next week? Probably. Uh, Tuesday looks fairly open. Okay. Oh, uh, that's this week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk All right. About I'll, I'll try to get something on schedule for them. All right. Okay, great. Well, thanks everybody. Okay, this, is a, this is a semi great idea. I'm using it right now and it's working pretty well. Um, so I found an extension for Chrome meetings where if you're muted, you can press the space button and you get unmuted so you can talk. So it's like a push to talk feature. Um, so, so far it's working out pretty well. If you all want to try it, um, it's out there in the Google Chrome store, but um, I, I've, I've not talked over my mute button yet, yet today. So, <laughs> so that's, that's progress over other meetings. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good that's a good tip. Thanks. And uh, I sent out the links for a couple other extensions that I, I thought we might want to try. One of them being this uh, closed captioning system that might make uh, Emily's job uh, a little bit easier or perhaps redundant. I can free her up to doing more interesting things than writing down all the gobbledygook that we say. And uh, and the other one is uh, the, you know this one that I thought I've seen guys using where you can uh, you know. Uh, raise your hand or give a thumbs up to something. Uh, if you've got something to say during, uh, you know, while somebody, you know, especially myself, is just blathering on. So, um, so yeah, I think we all need to have that installed to see those notifications come through. I think that's how that works. I'm not really sure. Do you, does everyone see my hand being raised right now in the lower left corner? I think you have to have it installed to see it on everybody. So like, I can see yours because I have it installed. Right. But if you don't have it installed, you won't see it. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, all right, yeah. So I encourage everyone to uh, install those so that we can we can use those. But um, uh, if you don't have it installed, then I, at least I do. And so if you're having trouble like getting your voice heard, you can uh, install that, and hopefully that'll be a little bit more noticeable. Um, right. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So thanks for that tip, uh, Chris. And yeah, and check the check these other extensions out. So. Yeah, that's it. So uh, I guess everybody have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you on Monday. Oh, good weekend, everybody. everybody on Monday. Hey, guys.